Music for some is most fully expressed in the form of jazz, distinctive bent syncopated improvisation. For others, it is country, patriotic steel twang ballads. For some, it's hip hop, lyrical sampled turntable beats. For others still, it's classical, refined, symphonic, orchestral, homophony. And yet there is a whole other subclass of music lovers among us for whom its proper expression is a different beast entirely. Arrogant, angry, aggressive abuse. They call it heavy metal. A long-standing mystery has persisted around heavy metal singers for years. How do they do it? All that screaming for hours at a time, and then get off the stage and can talk normally. How come they never damage their vocal cords? Now, using high-speed imaging, one San Francisco doctor thinks he found the secret. Heavy metal singing is essentially what a baby does. Inside Science. Not everyone reacts warmly at first to heavy metal singing. Its brazen acoustic affrontery may seem more of a war call than vocal stylings. In fact, some trace its origins to an almost forgotten violent past. There is a description um, of the, um, by uh, some Arabic merchants who visited Northern Europe in 9th century, 10th century, and he says that these people produce sounds that are aggressive, terrible, and maybe that's the original heavy metal Viking call for submission or whatever it is. But heavy metal singing fascinates Dr. Krzysztof Izdebski because he does clinical work with people who have voice problems people who injure their throats playing sports, people who use their voices professionally, actors, teachers, who strain their voices from too much loud oration, causing the vocal cords to bleed. So we call it phonotrauma, or vocal abuse. And phonotrauma caused by wrong voice usage is something extremely difficult to deal with, and it can last for months and months at a time. Yet again, the mystery. How do heavy metal singers do it? screaming angry, abusive lyrics for hours with no hint of pathological damage. Using high-tech, high-speed imaging of the throat, Izdebski may have found the answer, a secret he says babies know instinctively. A little baby has all the sounds. It has the sounds of screaming and growl and inhalation and high pitch and whistle and low pitch. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, all of this we have we learn from the very we have it, and then we somehow lose it, and the patients who suffer can't learn how to do this. Izdebski's high-speed camera can look down someone's throat and record them singing at up to 16,000 frames a second. Using this, combined with sophisticated software, he systematically examined one heavy metal singer in a way that has never been done before. What you are looking at is slow motion video of one singer's vocal cords the tissue folds vibrate under an expelled airstream to produce sound. He studied all the sounds the singer could make, from sucking air to screaming to high whistles to something Izdebski calls the heavy metal growl. So uh, growl is, um, is one of the most aggressive sounds uh, that heavy metal does uh, do. It sounds something like Rah! okay. So growl is produced and they can do it over and over and over and over and over, hour after hour. So the images that we recorded clearly shows that it's produced predominantly, predominantly by structures above glottis. So the vocal folds do open and vibrate, but actually don't collide. And the entire sick area above, area epiglottic folds, arytenoids, epiglottis, everything collapses and dances basically in, and creates vibrations and creates acoustic uh, or orchestration. The analysis appears to have revealed how these singers can sing for hours and still suffer no trauma. No hint of hypervascularization, ulceration, bleeding, or swelling. It became clear watching the videos that the vocal cords never collide, something you would expect when you raise your voice. And that's the secret. When the air comes up from the lungs and passes through the trachea over the vocal cords, the structures above the cords tap together, or percuss. The area above is very loose, and the air turbulence that comes through 
air that comes through produces turbulence, and the turbulence produces the sound. Izdebski said the work may be relevant to other professionals like performers and teachers, many of whom he sees in his practice. It also may help people who crush their larynxes, a debilitating injury that is common among kids who crash on rails while riding skateboards or adults who suffer clothesline injuries on sailboats. When you crush the larynx, it cannot be repaired. And these people suffer, they cannot talk. So, you know, we can use this, this technology of uh, this artistic technology, perhaps to try to restore some foundation in this individual. Izdebski plans to continue exploring the clinical applications for this secret technique of heavy metal singers, which he says they do intuitively. Perhaps anyone can learn to do it, since babies are able to do it instinctively. Izdebski also said doing this work has given him newfound respect for the art of heavy metal. And these guys, do, they do produce really very specific tasks and very specific melodies that are then supported by instruments. And it's not just kind of going on stage and screaming and, and doing uh, uh, sort of uh, random stuff. They really uh, compose this stuff. This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.